Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. This is part three of a series on creating synthetic data sets with Blender. In this video, we're going to talk about automation, meaning automating a bunch of variation that's going to go into your synthetic data set. Annotation, meaning automatically creating annotations for your data set. Scalability and accessibility, meaning that it's super accessible and easy to get it, get started with, even if you don't have a huge budget or a bunch of artists or developers. In order to effectively train an AI computer vision model, you need training images with a lot of variation. Blender allows us to create that variation, arguably better than the real world. You can render objects from any angle, at any scale, with any material, with any lighting conditions, and in front of whatever background you want. You can randomize these variations and automate the entire thing so that once the scene is built, it's highly reusable. Let's think of a real world example. Imagine a self-driving car is trained to spot other cars on the road. Chances are good that it's been trained on hundreds of thousands of images of cars, so it's generally extremely accurate at recognizing cars. What happens when it comes across a car that has flipped on its side? It probably would use LiDAR to avoid hitting it, but would it know to keep a safe distance in case of fire or explosion? How many of those training images even included the underside of a car? My guess is not many. It's not practical to take hundreds of thousands of pictures of flipped cars in the real world. However, in Blender, we can take as many as we want automatically. In fact, we could guarantee that there are just as many photos of the underside as of any other angle. We've talked about how great Blender is for creating photorealistic images with lots of variety, but now let's talk about annotations. There are tons of different kinds of annotations that might be needed to train AI computer vision. Labels, bounding boxes, segmentation, depth, object pose, relations, key points. Those are just the most common right now, Blender can provide these annotations for us automatically. Segmentation can be accomplished with render passes, and bounding boxes are just simplified segmentations if you think about it. Depth is another render pass available to us. Object pose is already available in the scene at every frame. All we need to do is log it to an annotation file. Key points would work exactly the same way. We just get individual points and we log out their position in space relative to the camera. Unlike with human-made annotations, these annotations are pixel perfect and nearly instantaneous. Imagine how impossible it would be for a human to estimate the depth of each pixel in an image. And imagine how long it would take to get a flawless pixel-wise annotation of every object of interest in an image. Blender does all of these things automatically, generally with no extra code required. Now, controlling all of this variation that I'm talking about probably sounds pretty complicated, but it actually is made quite easy with Blender's built-in Python API. Anything you can do with the user interface, you can do with a Python script. And on top of that, you can launch Blender from the command line and run it without any user interface. So you could easily run Blender on a server fully automated. This makes Blender highly scalable. There are multiple solutions out there for creating Blender render farms, including hosted solutions and open source self-hosted options. Since it's cross-platform, you can even run Blender in a Linux Docker container, for example. Finally, I just want to touch on the accessibility of Blender. As you probably already know, Blender's free, and it's open source and it works on Windows, Mac, and Linux. So it's a perfect tool for research or commercial projects or just playing around with for fun. It has growing industry support with many big companies contributing to the Blender Development Fund. And just to be clear, these aren't investors seeking returns. They're big tech companies that are giving money to the Blender development team to use however they want. And that just shows how valuable this software is in the industry, that these companies are willing to give money to just develop it without getting any direct financial return. And most important, I just wanted to say it's, it's actually a lot of fun to learn, and it's easy to use. There are tons of great free and low-cost tutorials and courses out there and large online communities of enthusiastic Blender users. 
I didn't go to school for Blender or 3D art. I have a computer science degree. So everything I know about Blender, I learned through YouTube tutorials and a few paid courses by talented instructors like Andrew Price from Blender Guru, Gleb Alexandrov, and ID Burroughs from Creative Shrimp, and Zach Reinhardt from CG Boost. My wife Kayla and I are actually contributing to the list of learning resources too with Immersive Limit. We've already released several popular YouTube videos on Blender, as well as a complete Blender modeling section in our AI Flight with Unity ML Agents course. All right, that wraps up this video, as well as this series on creating synthetic datasets with Blender. I hope you found it interesting and informative. And if you're interested in more content like this, we're planning on releasing some more educational content in the form of YouTube videos and courses. So make sure to subscribe to the channel or follow us on other social media for updates on that. And as always, thank you so much for watching.